Uh, in this module that we are going to start now, we will be having four lectures and here we will be talking about the different ways of designing interactive web pages. Uh, here in the first lecture today, I will be talking about HTML forms. In the next lecture, we will be talking about something called image maps. After that, CGI scripts or common gateway interface followed by some other technologies uh, which are also similar and competing. Uh, first, let us try to understand what is meant by an interactive web page. See, normally the conventional web page whatever we see, we type in an URL or click a text which points to a URL the page from that URL gets fetched and it is displayed on my screen. I am sure all of you are familiar with the search engines people use. That means, we need something, I do not know where it is, I use the search engines. Google, Yahoo, these are very popular search, in, search, in, search engines today. Now, what I am trying to say is that, suppose I give something for search to Google. Suppose I say I want to search for HTML. So, there is a small white box, I type HTML, I press search and after some time Google gives me a big list of places where I can go for more information about HTML. Now, what I see on my screen now is a page which Google has sent to me that page contains a number of information all containing information about HTML links to HTML. But is it the case that this page was stored somewhere in the Google server and after my request that page have been sent to me? See this is not possible because what the user will be giving for searching that Google cannot predict there can be millions of possibilities. I can give searching HTML, I can give hypertext markup language, I can give HTML form, I can give so many things. So, a more logical approach would be that Google stores this thing somewhere in a database depending on the user's request that gets fetched from the database the information and they get dynamically formed into an HTML document and sent it back to me. This is what interactive page means that the page is not residing as it is on the server, but depending on the request it gets created and is sent back. Okay. Now, HTML forms which is the topic of our discussion today is one way to achieve this kind of a thing. Now, HTML form provides two way communication between web servers and browsers. Now, when I say two way communication, I mean two way communication of information. It is not what is done conventionally in web pages where I click on a URL and HTTP request goes to the web server, the web server sends me back a document. This is data transfer in one direction, in the other direction that was control request. But in web, in case of interactive web pages, in case of HTML forms, you take that example of Google once again, I type something, press enter, I type HTML say, press enter or search, a request goes with a data item saying that the user has asked to search for HTML, HTML is the data. So, some data is flowing from my computer to Google. Of course, Google will be sending back the result page to me. So, it is a two way communication here, right. So, for most of the emerging application today, we need this kind of two way communication and as I mentioned, this also provides dynamic contents. Like everything cannot be present statically on page. Suppose, suppose I create my home page 
and unless I update that HTML page regularly, it will become stale, but a better way would be I update a database and automatically there is some other program which will create the HTML page from there. That will be much, much easier for me. Okay. This is just some examples. Okay. Now, let us see what is an HTML form. A form is basically a part of a web page which contains boxes and buttons. The Google search page that is an example of a form. There was a box where I could type in that HTML, there was a button which I could click search. There is a box, there is a button. There can be several such boxes and buttons in a page. This is what a form is. Some real life examples search engines I have already talked about. Today we purchase items online, we book tickets online, we do registration. Say suppose I enroll for a course, many of the courses, many of the institutions have online mechanism for submitting our registration requests. We can say that these are the courses we want to take this semester or this year and so on. So, if you look at the search engine example again, there was a box which was appearing and there was a button. So, after filling up the box, I press the button. right? So, the form basically allows a user to do two things. Number one, to fill up the blank entries, in this case the box and click that search button or submit button whatever you call to send it back to the owner of the page. Well, here owner of the page means I am referring to Google. In general, this will be the website from where the page was brought. The the page containing the form I had brought from somewhere, I submit it, it will go to the same place, to the same web server. Okay. This is sometimes called submitting the form. Submitting the form means whatever I filled up in the form, that data will go back to the server. This is one small example of a student registration form. This shows you can see there are four boxes you can see one, two, five boxes. One where the student is supposed to fill up his or her name, second one roll number. In the third one there are three courses he or she can take the course numbers and after finishing filling up the course numbers, the student can press on this button submit query. Okay submit query button will allow the data which was entered to be sent back to the place from where this form was fetched, the particular website. Typically in many such forms there is another button called reset, which if you press the contents of the form will be cleared, everything whatever you have typed will, will become blank again, you can type in something new. Okay. So, this is how a typical form looks like. Now, let us look into the details that means, what are the tags and attributes that you can use to create a form. Broadly there are four sets of tags, form, input, text area, select. So, let us see how this can be used. Form is the most important or the basic tag that can be used to bracket the definition of an HTML form there is a begin form and end form between which the whole definition of the form should be there. And within this form definition there are a number of attributes you can specify, which specify where and how to deliver the field of information to the web server. There are two things. I have a form, I have filled up the information, I have submitted the form. The data must go somewhere. Logically speaking, what you should expect? There should be a program running somewhere 
that should take this data as an input, do something maybe stored in the database or something and then send me back an acknowledgement page that while well it is done. So, there are two things I need to specify. If there are alternatives, then I should specify how I am sending the form data to you. And number two, I should say that when this form data goes, where it should go, which program should start running, which program should take this form data as input. Because there can be several such forms that may be coming from that website and each form data should go to the correct places. Okay? These are the two things I should uniquely specify. So, there are two broad attributes, one is method, one is action. These are used to specify that how it is sent and why it is sent. So, let us see. Method. The method attribute tells you that how the information in the form will be sent to the web server. How is important because here there are two alternatives and these alternatives you have already studied earlier in connection with the HTTP protocol. We had seen that we had get and post there are two methods of submitting requests. The same thing holds here exactly in the same way data can go to the server in two different ways get and post. That is why you have to specify which one you are using. Okay? So, method will indicate how the information will be sent to the web server. There are two possible values of method you can use post get. Post will come to the detail later, post will cause the contents of a form that means the data you are filling or you have filled up to be parsed one element at a time. In get all the field names and values are concatenated in a single large string and that single large string is sent to the server. Now, in general post is the preferred method because in get we are sending the information as a single large string. Now, in most systems there is a maximum upper limit to the size of a string. In some systems it can be as small as 256 characters, in some system it can be 4096 characters and so on, but there is some limit. But in post there is no such limit. So, if the form is big and the data is longer, you will have to use post not get. Get can be used only for very small forms. And the action attribute will specify the URL of a program on the origin server. Origin server means the web server from where you have fetched the from that is the origin server. So, the action attribute will tell you that on that origin server which particular program will take my data as input. Right? So, URL of the program that will be receiving the forms inputs. Now, this particular program residing on the origin server and will be taking the inputs has been conventionally or traditionally called or known as the common gateway interface or CGI. So, we shall be talking about CGI later in more detail, but just understand that this program which will be taking the input is the CGI program. And how it works or means what happens after that? The specified program or the CGI program gets executed on the server when you have submitted the form. And after execution is complete whatever processing is required the output will be sent back to the browser. It depends on the application what output you want to send back. For a search engine I need the list of pages and the links where I can find my, my information whatever I am looking for. But for some other case for a student registration it may respond with a single line that well your registration has been completed successfully thank you. Okay? So, it depends on the application what 
kind of information has to be sent back and what kind of processing is required. Now, this is a typical example how the method and action attributes are used along with form. So, this is the form tag. So, within this all the definition of the form are there. Here is specify method equal to post and action equal to the name of the program which will take. Now, this dot pl is a Perl program. Now, incidentally, CGI programs requires pretty good amount of string handling or string manipulation and Perl is a language which has very powerful string manipulation capabilities. So, many, many people, many persons prefer to write CGI programs in Perl. They normally have an extension PL. Okay. So, this is a Perl program which is located under this particular directory on the origin server. Okay. Now, let us come to the, the other tags which are there inside the form. Input tag is the most important. The input tag defines a basic form element. So, I have a form. Inside a form, there will be several elements. Elements can be of a number of different types. Okay. So, what kind of form element is this and what are the corresponding attributes that can be specified using a number of different attribute values, type, name, size, max length, etcetera. These are all associated with the input tag. So, let us see one by one what these attributes mean. First of all, this type is very important because type will tell you what kind of form element you are trying to insert, whether it is a box, whether it is a button or that is something else. There are many alternatives. Let us look at these now. First, the type attribute of the input tag. Type attribute defines the kind or the type of element that you want to insert or display in the form. Now, the value of type can be one of these. It can be text. If it is text, it means you are defining a text box. Text box looks like a simple box like this, where you can enter a text. There is a box where you enter a text like the Google search box, that is a text box. Provides a single line for entering text. There is something called radio button. In fact, radio button is not defined independently, but as a group. Suppose there are three radio buttons, for example. Okay. Radio button is used when a choice must be made among several alternatives. Okay. So, in certain cases, you may have to fill up a choice. For example, you are sitting for an exam, you have been asked to give your option that whether you want the question paper in, in English, in Hindi or in Bengali. So, you cannot click more than one, you have to click exactly one. Okay. So, this is an example of a radio box. Well, you have seen the older radio types where the buttons are push button type, several buttons so that you push one, all the others should come up. So, you can push only one at a time. So, from there this radio button name has come. Okay. So, this is used when a choice must be made among several alternatives. Clicking on one of the buttons turns off all the others in the same group. So, if these buttons all belong to the same group, exactly one of them can be made active at a time. Like uh, anything is sex, male or female, you click one of them, okay, the other will turn off like this. Checkbox is another type, type equal to checkbox. This is similar to radio button again, why? Because here also you have several related buttons in a group. But the difference is that here you can select each of them independently of the others. It is not that selecting one of them will 
deselect the others automatically. Take an example, again suppose uh, you have been asked that what are the languages you know, English, Bengali, Hindi, Marathi, there you can tick more than one. This is an example of a check box, you check all the boxes that are applicable. Okay? So, this is the difference between radio and check box. There is another value called password. Password is like a text box in many application you need to enter username and password. Password is also like a text box, but normally when you enter the password you cannot see what is being entered. That is the main difference. It is also a text box, but whatever you enter is not visible on the box. Either nothing will come or some stars or dot 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 will come. Okay. Password is similar to text box, but characters are not shown as their type. Well, hidden is a special value. This is used for output only. You cannot enter something here. It shows some fixed value. It cannot be modified. Mainly used to refer to choices that have already been made earlier. Like I am giving an example. Suppose you are again registering for a course. In the opening page, you had entered your registration number. In the succeeding pages, some other forms will be coming asking you to fill it up. Now, on one of the hidden form, your registration number can appear, which you had already entered in the earlier form. But you need to refer to that information that you can show in a hidden box. Hidden box is something which you can see, but you cannot modify. Okay? That is the purpose of the hidden box. Image. Well, image we shall see in detail later. This image is used for something called active maps. In a form, you can have image also. Suppose you have an image on the map. Suppose this is an image. Now, active map means, let us take an example. Suppose you have a map of India. You click on that map and wherever you click, the coordinate of the point you are clicking goes back. And just by looking at the coordinate, the CGI program can find out on which state you have clicked. This is just an example. So, active map means it is a image and where you are clicking, the corresponding x y coordinate will be sent back. So, with the x y coordinate that program can take some decision. Right? So, x y coordinates are stored in variable and are written for further processing. Submit and reset are the two buttons which we had shown in that example form. Submit creates a box with a default name submit. Of course, you can change the name of this button. If you click on this button, the form data will be submitted and will be passed on to the CGI script. Reset is another box, if you click it, it will clear the forms contents. Okay? So, these are the types of attributes that you can associate with the input tag. This is the type, type at, um, this is the type attribute, these are the possible values of the type attribute. Now, the other attributes associated with input are name. With each input form element, you can specify a name. Like here, for the submit button, if you specify a name like name equal to go, then instead of submit that form, that button will be labeled with go. Okay? So, you can change the name like this. Name is required for other purpose also, when the values you have entered are sent back to the CGI program. This the CGI program must know that which value is for which form element. It should say name equal to x y z, roll number equal to 10, age equal to 20 and so on. So, this name, roll number, age, these are the names associated with three form elements. Okay? So, each form element must be associated with some name using this name attribute of the input tag size. Size tells you the number of characters that can be displayed in a text box without scrolling. Normally, a text box 
appears with a fixed width. If you go on typing more, the text goes on scrolling. Okay. So, this will tell you the width of the text box that will appear in the initial place, in the first place. Max length is again related to text box, the maximum number of characters you can enter even with scrolling. Well, if it crosses the size it will scroll, but max length is the maximum number you can enter beyond which it will not take at all of what you type. Okay. Value, using value you can uh, submit some value to hidden field. Suppose you give a value equal to xyz to hidden field that xyz will, will that value will appear in the hidden field. This can also be used as an alternate way to specify the label of a button. Okay, I told you renaming submit for example, to something like go you can use the value also to do the same thing. Source this is required when you are using an image map this src is used to provide a pointer to an image file src equal to the path name of the image file. This is used only for clickable maps, okay? this we shall discuss later. And when it is image then along with image you can use the align types that means whether you want to align it with the text top middle or bottom which way. Okay? So, these options are available. Then comes the text area tag, these are the things which are seen with the input tag. Now comes the text area. Text area is similar to a text input box, but in an input text box you can only type in one line, but in text area I can type multiple lines, it appears just as a box, okay? as a box where I can type in multiple lines of text. Here the attributes are again each form element is associated with a name because when the value goes to the CGI script it goes with the value with, with the value as well as the name which form element it is name and value pairs will go to the program. So, this name will talk about the name of the field rows means the number of lines of text that can fit into the box. That means, how many rows are there in the box and column is the width of the that means, rows and columns will tell you the size of the box that appears on the screen. Okay. So, in this way you can define a text area, let us have more amount of text for example, you are, you are asking someone to enter the address. So, address cannot fit, fit in one line you can use a text area for that. Okay. Select this allows you to do some selection in a flexible way. Uh, well, of course, you can use the the radio buttons and the checkbox buttons for selection, but it can be much more flexible. If there are say 20 items from which you have to select, and if you use radio or checkbox, there has to be 20 buttons displayed. Okay, so many buttons. Rather it will be more convenient if you have a pull down menu, I click somewhere, I get a menu, I select one of them that gets selected, that is much more convenient. So, the select tag does exactly that. Select tag allows us to define a selectable list of elements. This is used along with a tag called option. This list appears either as a scrollable menu or as a pop up menu of course, this decision is not up to the user they depends on the type of browser you are using. On some browser it comes up as a pop up menu, but, or, but, but on other browser is come as scrollable menu. With select there are some, some attributes, first is again the name of this form element, name of the field, size tells you the number of option element that will be displayed at a time. Because if you see uh, the pull down menus that are found in many places where you register you are asked to select your country. 
you will see that a few countries are showed at a time, if you click on it you see the entire list. So, you can specify how many of them will be displayed at a time, if you say 3, 3 of them will be displayed at a time with a scroll bar or clickable, you click you see the entire list or you scroll up and down and see, but at a time you can see 3 for example. The size will tell you that how many you can see at a time, number of option elements that will be displayed at a time. Now, if the actual number of elements you are defining using option exceeds this size, then a scroll bar will appear, otherwise scroll bar will not appear. Okay. This is an example, multiple is another uh, see here attributes are name and size, there is another attribute called multiple, multiple says that in some cases you can select multiple numbers like the languages you know. This is an example of multiple, of course here I have not shown multiple, here you can add this multiple tag also. Okay. This is a form, this is one form element I am showing here, language is known as just a text, select name equal to lang, lang is the name of the form element, size is 3 means there are 4 languages I am defining using option, 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 but 3 of them will be displayed at a time, okay. there will be a scroll bar. If I do not use multiple, then uh, then I can select only one of them at a time, but if I use multiple then I can select as many of them I want at a time. Okay. So, now let us take some complete examples of HTML forms, because we have looked at HTML forms in bits and pieces, what are the different attributes, the tags, attributes, their values. Now, let us see how this everything can be used together in one place. Now, this example shows that uh, well these are the, the standard things the head, body, sentence, some text. The next part is this, here you are defining the form method equal to post, action equal to a link to the CGI script. Now, you see there are so many inputs 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and 6 and 7, there are 7 form elements. First one says name colon input name equal to this is the name of the element, type equal to text, size equal to 30, max length equal to 50. So, on the screen you will get name, by the side of it you will get a form called that means a text box with a size of 30. Okay. Similarly, on the next line you will get roll this, this, this all starts with new paragraph that is why this will go on next line, roll number, input name, type text, size 7, course numbers there are 3 courses, okay. type text, size 6, press submit when done, input, see here we have given type equal to submit, input type equal to this, so these 2 buttons are all, all, also there. So, this is a simple form we have specified and if we see it on the screen it will look like this, name by the side of it 30, size text box, roll number, course number, place submit and the and these 2 buttons. Now, in internet explorer by default the submit button is labeled as submit query, okay? but you can change it. This example 2 is another form is slightly more complex, the first part is again straightforward body, the heading, student registration form. Well, here again the first line form is the same, name as usual, roll number as usual, course number is also same, we had added this part, category, schedule cast, schedule tribe, general. This is a radio button, you cannot be more than one of these together, so it will be one of these 3. Now, you would observe one thing, since these 3 belong to the same category, so for all these 3 I have used the same value of the name cat. 
So, if we use another set of radio buttons for some other thing, say the languages you want to give the exam, that will be having another name. The reason you are having name is that, when the values are sent back to the CGI program, they will be sent back with the name of the field and the value of the field, name and value pairs, name value, name value, name value, it will go like that. So, if the CGI script knows that these are the names of the fields given, then it, it then becomes very easy to identify the values. Okay. All right. So, so this part is uh, for the radio button. Now, there is another part uh, into the form, the last part, there is a select also. Just look at the select. Select this is one element, the name as usual has been given mother tongue, m tongue. Size is 3, means 3 elements need to be displayed at a time, but we have specified 6. Okay. Then again input type submit, here we have changed the value to done. Type reset, we have changed the label to clear form. Okay. So, if you see the form now, it will look like you see, here you have done clear form. So, the labels have changed, let us go back and see what you have done. Input type equal to submit, if you do not give this then by default submit query or something will come, but if you give value equal to done then this done will appear. Similarly, clear form I have changed this and, and you see for this radio buttons it appears like this, three radio buttons are appearing together, okay. SC a button, ST a button, G. So, you can click one of them and at most one of them can be clicked at. Suppose you click G, this gets highlighted, you click ST, G again becomes blank. Okay. Mother tongue, there are six, but three are displayed at a time as you can see. Since the number in the list is more than three, a scroll bar has come on the right, you can move up and down to scroll the languages up and down and, and do whatever you want. Okay. Fine. So, a third example, so again the first part is the same student feedback form, nothing much to discuss here. Well, here. So, Again action, some link is given, there is a name, roll number, here you are given a password, okay. password size 10 of type equal to password. So, here you have defined an input box with a type and password, course numbers as usual, category as usual, mother tongue as usual. Okay. So, here you have not made any change, but here we made another thing an example of a check box, language is known as I said, language is known English, Hindi, both are of type check box. Since they belong to one group, their names are the same, both have been given the same name language. Scholarship holder select for yes, type check box, this is a check box with a single button if you are scholarship holder you select it. So, you have so means here also you have given some other name, but this is a check box which is which is appearing independently only one check box is there. Lastly, there is another thing general feedback if you have any general feedback some text area is there you can type in something. Okay. So, rows 3 columns 20 is given thanks for the information the rest is same. So, this if you show it comes like this. First part is as usual. So, language is known. Now, check boxes are shown in rectangular buttons and radio buttons are showed in, in the form of circles. Scholarship holder there is a single, general feedback there is a area where you can type anything. Okay. So, this is how the form will appear and in such a form you can type in anything, then you can submit, it will go 
to the CGI program for further processing. Now, the next question is how to submit a form. So, after filling well of course, you can click on the submit button to submit a form, but there are other two ways also. There are three different ways. You can either click on the submit button using the mouse. Secondly, if the form contains an active map for our examples it did not contain, then on that active map image if you click it then also it will get submitted, because by definition whenever you click on an active map the x and y coordinates immediately get transferred to the CGI script that is submitted. Okay. And the third way is just by pressing enter when the cursor is either on a text box or on a text area. Just on the just select using mouse the cursor and put the cursor somewhere then press enter that will also submit. And just like Google when you type something you did not press always on search you can also press enter that will also submit your request okay, in exactly the same way. So, the basic mechanism here just look at this diagram. This was the web server okay. this was the web server or the origin server where a particular page was residing P. Suppose this is the browser where I am sitting. So, I have typed the URL and this particular page has been fetched and is being displayed correct currently on the browser. Okay. So, what I mean to say is that I have fetched a page which contains a form from an origin server and it is presently being displayed on my screen. right? Now, I fill up the form with some data and I submit the form. What happens now? now after I submit the form, the data that I have entered along with other info regarding the names of the fields will get transmitted to the CGI program. To the server of course, server will forward it to the corresponding CGI program. Now, you may ask how does the server know which CGI program to forward to there can be so many. The answer is if you look at the syntax of the form tag the start form tag there are those method and action. So, in action you specify the exact URL of the CGI program where to forward the data to okay, which program to execute. So, the data will finally, go to the correct CGI program which is also residing on the same origin server. See the web servers do not allow that you are bringing form from one place, but the CGI server is residing in some other place that is normally not allowed both must be there in the same place. And the CGI program will take those data as input will execute it and, and after execution will generate a new HTML page as output just like the Google search engine does when you submit a request for search. It responds back with a new page and that page will now come and replace your old page you can see it on the browser window. Okay. So, now a few things just I mentioned I am just again repeating formally because this concept is very important. The web page that includes a form this originally resides on the web server, where if you are familiar with installation of a web server like Apache, if you are not I strongly recommend that you should download a web server like Apache which is freely available on the net and you can install on your machine and see you will find that after installing an apache root directory will be created and under that apache root directory some standard folders will be created folders or directories one directory will be called html there will be one directory called cgi bin and so on so typically in the folder called html 
all HTML files and other documents are kept. So, this particular web page which included that form has to reside on that particular folder. Okay. Now, coming to the CGI script program that was handling the form data, CGI script program for many web server, they put a restriction that they must reside under a special folder on the web server usually CGI bin. So, all CGI script programs are running are stored under the CGI bin folder. CGI script program in general can be written in any language Perl, C, Java, shell script also and the web page is linked to the CGI script using that form tag I just mentioned. Now, just one point here you may just ask why this kind of restrictions are needed that the CGI programs need to be stored under the CGI bin directory. Well, the, won't it be good if my HTML file and CGI file were stored in one place in the same folder? The reason is that you see CGI program or CGI script is a program that is residing on the web server and it is executing in response to user requests when the user submits a form. Now, user can be anywhere and anybody, you do not know whether he is an authorized user or someone who is trying to hack your system. So, essentially anyone can type in something on the form and can execute that CGI program in your particular directory. So, as an additional protection if you keep all such programs in a particular directory then some additional protections can be enforced at the level of the directory. So, that is one reason why, why, the, why the CGI scripts are typically kept separate. But there are some browsers, uh, there are some web servers again where you can store it anywhere, there is no restriction as such. So, just to repeat, when you define a form, in the method you specify how the form data will be submitted and in the action you specify the path name of your CGI script program. This is as I mentioned typically under the CGI bin directory and you are not specifying the full path you just mentioned, you just specifying CGI bin slash my prog. It starts always from the web server root, I said Apache root is created under that CGI bin is there, from there it starts checking is there a directory called CGI bin, it finds there is, okay. fine. So, now a few things re regarding the CGI program, how to write the CGI program. Well, in order to write the CGI program, you need to know a few things. First, how to access the form data? We have just mentioned that there are two methods, get and post, but, but we have not yet discussed when you are writing the CGI program, how should the CGI program read those data from where? Okay. So, this is one thing we need to address. This mechanism of course, will be depending on the method, for get it is different, for post it is different and how the CGI script will be returning processed output back to the browser, because it cannot print something on the screen of the server, it has to go come back to the browser. Okay. So, this must also be known and how it can generate HTML file on the fly. So, these details we would be discussing later in our next class, but it is always advisable to have a look at a typical Perl script a CGI script program written in Perl or any other language for that matter and see that what are the components of a CGI script program, what are the different parts to it. Okay. So, this uh, CGI script program in detail uh, will be taken up in our next lecture, we will be talking about CGI scripts and how they can read the data, where they can output the data and so on. So, with this we come to the end of this particular lecture, lecture number 17 on HTML forms. Let us uh, quickly go through the answer solutions 
to the problems of our previous class. What is a markup language? Markup language is a language that provides constructs to specify how a document is to be viewed. Sorry, this should be is is to be viewed. What are the three main specifications of def so defining XML? This I had mentioned XML, the original specification, XLink or XPointer, and XSL. These are the three. Give an example of an XML element. How can an empty element be specified? XML element can be defined like this, empty element can be defined like this with a slash at the end. What is an XML attribute? Give an example. They are name value pairs attached to elements. These are elements and this is a name and a value pair. So, this is an attribute. So, using entity reference, how will the string hello um, be represented? This initial quote will come like this, then hello, then single apostrophe will come like this, then this final double quote will come like this. Okay. How do you insert comments in XML? By enclosing between this beginning and end comment symbols. Why C data section used? To instruct the XML parser to ignore the markup characters, not to try and expand them. What do element type declarations do? They identify names of elements and the nature of their contents. What do attribute list declarations do? Specify names and types of attributes. Give an example of simple link. The same example was discussed like this. How do you specify extended links? By using the elink e e tag and the locator tag, these two tags. And how do you retain the white spaces? By using this preserve value along with the attribute XML space in the particular particular element where you want to use them. Now, some questions uh, for today's lecture. Why it is said that the use of forms can provide dynamic contents? What is the purpose of the method attribute of the form tag? What is the purpose of the action attribute of the form tag? Illustrate the use of method and action in a form definition with the help of an example. What is the difference between the text and password values in the type attribute of a form element? What is the difference between the radio and checkbox values in the type attribute of a form element? What is the purpose of the select tag? What are the different ways to submit a form? So, in our next lecture, we would be looking at CGI scripts, some details about them. Thank you. Uh, if you recall, in our last lecture, we were talking about HTML forms. Now, using form, what we are able to do? We are able to create an environment through which two way communication was possible between the web client which is the browser and the web server. So, a form was displayed on the screen as part of an HTML page which a user can fill up and when the form was submitted, the data that were filled up would be going or would be transmitted to the web server where a particular program which is linked to that particular form which we had called as a CGI script or a CGI program that would start running and the CGI program would take the form data that are filled up as input and would do some processing and whatever it generates as output would be coming back and shown on the screen of the browser. Now, before going into how a CGI script can be created, the details of it, we would like to talk about another technology or another way in which we can interact with the web server, but not through textual text boxes submit button, but through some images by selecting some portions of images. There are some predefined or well defined rules that you can define on the different portions of an image and depending on where you are clicking on that image, you may choose to carry out certain operation. 
So, our topic of discussion today is something called image map which provides just that kind of a capability. Now, let us see what is an image map. Basically an image map it is an image a graphics a jpeg or a gif image which is displayed on the screen. It allows us to create links to different URLs depending upon where we click on the image. Now, here I am giving a very simple example where this kind of a capability may be required or may be useful or desirable. Suppose I want to develop an information system about our country, information about the different states of the country. I can define it at the beginning as base URL and by default in all the other URLs I am giving that will be prepended at the beginning. Okay. This is a way of a shortcut. Now, you imagine that you have an image, you have defined certain regions of the image and you have defined a hyperlink corresponding to it and URL corresponding to it. Now, it is not mandatory for you that you must assign each and every area of the image to some hyperlink. So, there may be some, some areas which are not linked. Now, if someone clicks on such an area which is not part of a region or a hotspot, then what happens? Then you go to the URL specified by the default specification. Default means when you are clicking on some place which is not part of an hotspot, then where do you where do you want to go? So, let us see the different options in a little detail. When you are defining the default as in the first line, this is typically the first line in the map file. This defines the URL to which the users will be taken if they click on an undefined area of the image. Undefined area means an area which is not being assigned to a URL in the map configuration file. Okay. Similarly, I had said when you are defining a circle, you specify two different coordinates to define the geometry of the circle. The first is of course, the center of the circle and the second one is a point on the circumference. This can be any point on the circumference. This can be this, you can also have this point and so on. So, for, for defining a circle you need two different coordinates, okay. center and any point on the circumference. Rectangles again need two coordinates, the first one is the upper left corner as I mentioned, the second one is the bottom right corner. For defining points, points are referred to as single coordinate. And as I said that when you click closest to that point on an image map as compared to any other region in the vicinity, 